The slide title is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to cover the very basics of negotiation. The two articles I had you read are classics. The Fisher article on Getting to Yes is a short summary of Fisher and Urey's longer book called Getting to Yes. It's an outstanding book, but the article gives you the very gist of his approach and points out the weaknesses of lots of other negotiating styles. The investigative negotiating is just uh, an embodiment or an example of how they're applying, people apply some of Fisher's principles. But most of our experiences has been with what would be called the old style distributive or hardball negotiating. And I'm going to pick on used car dealers <laughs> because this is what we, we typically think about is all the tactics you go through with used car dealers. You can see a lot of these tactics played out in, say, union management negotiations. And the basic principle of a hardball negotiation is the pie is only so big and uh, it's all about figuring out who gets what size of the pie. And I'll tell you right up front, Fisher and Yuri kind of reject that and say, let's grow the pie. In many cases, that probably is true but not in all cases. So some cases it does come down to deciding who's going to get to keep what and that's just the way it is. These are the tactics that you see in hardball negotiations. You have probably experienced these. You maybe have used these and I won't lie to you, some of them work very, very well. The getting to yes takes a different philosophy. It views negotiation as a chance to make the pie bigger and negotiation as a part of problem solving. And so you're going to see in the article, or I hope you've already read it, or I hope you watch this before you read it, this is going to searching for a wise outcome. These are the four principles that you're going to see in that article as they try to separate things out. Really good advice, but you walk away from that with a feeling it's kind of like if Spock was a negotiator. No emotion whatsoever, hyper-rational, we're simply looking to do the best, we're looking for objective evaluation criteria some of these things isn't going to work in a lot of cases and we know that because Spock we aren't negotiating with Spock we're negotiating with another human being nonetheless they're great principles to keep in mind and I have to tell you if I were to go into a negotiation I would go back and reread this article just to kind of get my mind right you know a little bit of a, mm, let me get my mindset before I step into the fray the investigator negotiation article is in uh, like I said how can you do some of the techniques that Fisher and Yuri are recommending in their basic approach of getting to yes? Uh, so it's a great article with great examples. I think you're really going to enjoy reading it. Let's talk about some things that aren't in the, uh, the readings about the basics of negotiation. The first is, is to go into, to prepare to go in and understand the bottom lines. You'll hear the term BATNA used a lot in negotiations, and that stands for best alternative to a negotiated agreement. In other words, this is your walk away price. When you go and you go to the used car dealer, uh, your bad is maybe another car, maybe not buying a car, something like that. But you, you should go in there with a top dollar that you're willing to pay. And if they don't come in underneath that top dollar, you walk away and use one of those other alternatives. That's your BATNA. So you want to try to figure, you want to know what your BATNA is. And you also want to try to figure out what their BATNA is because, again, this starts to sound like combat again, but you're going to figure out who needs who the worst. You want to know who you're dealing with to try to do some research. Um, again, picking on the poor car dealers, I would not buy a car except on the last weekend of the month because I understand how they work on incentives. Uh, in particular, I would like to buy a car on the last weekend of a slow month when there's a good chance that my dealer or, or my salesman hasn't met his or her um, minimum to, to maximize their commissions yet. Um, I don't think well on the fly, perhaps you do, so you want to think about options in advance and try to shape the negotiating space. Some of this will have to do with a sequencing of like if you choose to do the written uh, uh, the written assignment or if you just want to read a fascinating article and read about Norm uh, Brodsky and what he did financing, his ho uh, financing the hotels up in North Dakota, you're going to see how he shaped the negotiating sh negotiation space with both of the parties. But let's come out of the real world for a second and say what happens when uh, you are dealing with somebody who's playing hardball tactics. Here are some very practical suggestions of how you want to employ that. One is, is you make a joke of it. For example, someone says, well, if we can't get this deal done by noon, my instructions are to walk away from the table. 
you look at them and say, oh, Jim, I know, that's a great technique. I've used that one before myself. What's really going to happen at noon? Ha, 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 we both know nothing. So let's sit down and just get to work. The other idea is make them sell it to you. Well, we need this much and this much. Well, how can I sell this to my wife? How can I sell this to my business partner? How can I sell this to my investors? And what you're trying to get them to do is to, to talk it out so that the silliness of their position becomes apparent to them. Uh, try to keep it never personal. Don't say, you know what? You're a liar. You were born a liar. You're always a liar. You're just lying in this negotiation. Try to make them explain their position. Again, the theory is the more they explain it, the more they're going to realize it's just untenable. Um, then you can say, well, well, if you had one thing to improve about my position, what would it be? This is, again, very investigative, trying to figure out what's really ringing their bell. And you're trying to figure out their uh, BATNA. Then something I don't do well, I'm getting better at since I teach this stuff a little bit, is silence. If somebody says something that's ludicrous, or if you put a position on the table and they don't respond, you just have to be willing to sit for an awkward period of silence. Uh, and then, again, try not to let it become personal. Try to stay focused on what it is you're trying to achieve. Um, there are some people who do a good job of using a volatile personality. They lose their cool. And sometimes that's effective in negotiations. Uh, a lot of times, particularly in cross-cultural negotiations, it's not. So I, my advice would be don't go there. What if you have a weak hand? You know it. Well, you try to improve your BATNA. You try to build a relationship with them such that they want to make things happy for you. And you try to worsen their BATNA. You know, for example, if... Uh, uh, if you know that this party could go do a deal with somebody else, you try to make it so that they can't go do that deal. And again, that becomes a little bit more of a hardball technique. A couple of last points about how to do investigative negotiation. And the Asians are very good at this, incidentally. We're Americans, we tend to be very linear on negotiating. Okay, let's settle SU A, let's settle B, let's settle C, let's settle D, let's settle E and F, and all, all down the line. One is, make multiple advances, uh, address multiple points, and make simultaneous offers. And for example, you could say, well, uh, would you take this price if we gave you this turnaround? So now you have two points in play instead of one. Um, and you say to them, you're, you're looking for feedback as to what do they value. Or you could say, well, I could give you this price in this turnaround time, or this price and this turnaround time, which of the two would you prefer? And again, the theory of all of that is try to figure out what floats their boat. Um, again, this is like a wham-bam introduction to negotiations. I had the privilege to audit a course at the uh, John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard on negotiations, learned a lot, loved it, still not a great negotiator because I'm not a good hardball negotiator. And I hope that you're going to be able to come to the Diller College excuse me, on the two evenings, so you can actually do some real face-to-face -face negotiations. I think you're going to enjoy it, and you'll learn a lot in the process. If not, do the EN assignment. Again, even if you're not going to do it, I recommend you read it, because it's a great example of how somebody is doing a very real-world business negotiation.